Hey guys. So I'm just gonna give this a second to see when the stream starts. I think we're good. So right now what we're doing is, if you guys haven't noticed, we're actually in a new streaming space. So instead of streaming from the maker space, we're now streaming like from our own streaming room. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so took me a minute to set up, but we're gonna get back into making stickers. If you remember last year, I was trying to use the embroidery machine to make some um, it, like embroidery patches to put on a sweater. And then this year, what I decided to do for our first stream is to make the stickers from some of the letters that I chose, um, just because um, two reasons. One is because I feel like having them in sticker form would be cool, but also um, at the Makerspace, we actually got m even more materials now. So for the Cricut, now not only can we make stickers, you can actually make um, like, what is it? Vinyl that you can iron on to clothing. So I forgot the name. I think it's like something to do with um, textile vinyl, but I have it in the back. I'll show you guys it later once I have the whole setup for what letters I'll be cutting out. Today, I think I'm just gonna be doing them in um, regular stickers, but if it comes out well and I figure it out, then maybe next time I'll put it on a shirt, I'll bring a shirt and you know, we can do it in the space. <laughs> but you know, I always like to test things out before I do them on clothing because Clothing is a little bit tricky. Also, if you guys haven't known, um, we also got Cricut markers. I'll also be showing you guys that later. Um, so now you can actually put like um, a marker straight into the Cricut and it'll draw like whatever design that you program onto it. I'll just be showing you the materials for that because I have yet to learn that as well. But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and lastly, I think the last thing that we got that is new for the Cricut is now there's um, printed like paper sheets like basically you can print a design onto the paper and then you can cut it out with the um Cricut and it'll turn into a sticker which I thought was pretty cool oh the Cleveland Public Library is here hello <laughs> but okay I'm gonna get started on picking which one of these stickers I'm gonna cut out I think I'm gonna do the, it the same way as I was doing it when I did the digital embroidery and make it like patches so basically I'll be putting some of these letters um, onto some squares and then so it'll be like kind of like emulating a patch we'll see how far I get so first thing I'm gonna do is these are some letters that I already actually like brought in to um, Inkscape the way that you would do that is you can actually import an image and then you can just cut it out or what you can do is you can download fonts and input them in here I've done it both ways so it depends on if you have like an easily um, downloadable font. Like for example, if you just wanted to type out words in Arial and then cut that out, you can just do that by um, using like the fonts that are already in Inkscape. But for me, I wanted to do some like interesting, some interesting like fonts. So I screenshotted like single letters that I saw like on Pinterest on like open source websites and then I brought the images into Inkscape and then took out the background. But say you wanted to use your own text, you would go up here to text and then you can press text and font, which is shift control T. And that's like all of these like text that's on the right hand side of my program. So for example, this is sans serif showing. There is like a few, a few cool fonts in here. And especially if you're doing like, um, a very basic project where you just need clear lettering the um, fonts that are already in Inkscape are really nice like for example I think this one is pretty interesting and it's also very readable <laughs> I will say the font that I have some of the letters are not as readable but you know I am going for the vibes not the readability <laughs> so I'm gonna close this out but you can use this you can set it as default and then you can type out and then make them into stickers but I'm just gonna use what I already have the word that I was going to put on my sweater was nostalgia, and I'm going to make those stickers today. So I don't know what I'm going to put them on yet. So if you guys have any recommendations, drop it in the chat. I was thinking of putting them on my water bottle, but I have a lot of stickers on my water bottle already, so maybe I'll put it on a notebook or something. I don't have a binder because I take all of my class notes on my laptop, so can't put them on a notebook. <laughs> so, okay. Well, these were the letters I initially chose for the sweater, I think. I'll just make them a different color for 
like ease of viewability. <laughs> okay, I'll make them blue. So these were the letters that I had originally picked out. I think I might change some of them. Uh, let's see which ones. I wanted to change the G just because I found like, that's why there's so many Gs here. I thought this G was like, it was just okay. <laughs> it didn't look that cool, you know? So I'm going to pick one of these. I think I'm going to use this letter just because I really like this font. The font is... Oh, wait. I forgot the name of the font, but I have it somewhere. I will pull it up eventually when we have a little bit more time. But I think that this font is pretty cool. I got it off of an open source website. Okay, I put it up. So the name of the font is Pillow Lava. Just only one L. I'll type it in the chat. This G that I'm about to pick. And I got it off of this open source website. Definitely check it out if you're into um, fonts because they have like a bunch of very neat um, designs. I think that's how you spell it. Okay, so this is the G I'm going to use. There are some other cool ones. Like I particularly like this one and this one. The rest of them, like this one is cool, but you can't really tell it's a G. So <laughs> I'll be erasing. I'll just pull these off to the side. Oh, this one is really cool too. I think I almost picked this one last time. So I'm going to pull these off to the side. Just all these Gs. This G was really intricate too as well. That I thought about doing this one. And then do I want to switch out any of the other? I will switch out the S's just because I thought this S was really cool. So let's do that. And then what would this look like? This flower is cool, but I feel like this one kind of goes more with the vibe. It's giving very futuristic. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pull all these off to the side. I'll just make them smaller. Oh, wait. I almost forgot the most important thing. When working in Inkscape, I personally always hit this. It's the lock at the top. And this will make sure that when you're resizing your items, that they are resized proportionately. Otherwise, if you just saw what happened, it, like if I don't have this checked, like you might skew it too like thin or too like squashed to the side. So I'm gonna just hit Control Z to return it back to normal. And then I hit the lock. And now, no matter like what I do, it'll be stuck in the same proportion. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side and let's work on this. Oh, I didn't even move all the G's. <laughs> okay. And this is like um, this square that's in the middle of the screen. That's like your working area. So for example, like another project that I was trying to make on the sticker is if you've ever seen those um, Spotify glass frames, it's like a piece of glass and people put like the Spotify like player symbols, the title of a song, and then like the album cover all on the glass. Um, what I did was I actually resized this square so it'd be the same size as my piece of glass so that I could see like what I was working with. But personally, when I'm making like stickers, um, it doesn't really matter what the, the size of the square is, is because either way you can export the image and then resize it in Cricut Design Space. And that's usually what I do. So I just kind of leave it like to be however big as I want it to be. <laughs> and I'm gonna take a second to see if there's any questions. Thank you. This this design, I think, is pretty epic. Yeah, this would look great on a t-shirt. <laughs> the original plan was to put it on an embroidery machine, but, like, it was it was getting there. But, you know, school ended before um, I finished working on it. And I was going to put it on a sweater, not a t-shirt. So I was like, oh, I'll just start working on it next winter or, like, when it gets closer to the winter. And lo and behold, it's already fall. The winter is fast approaching. <laughs> I'm trying to finish this before winter so that I can wear it. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm gonna do here is, if you see me dragging like a box around the letters, what I'm doing is I'm just holding the left clicker on the mouse, drawing a square on these items, and that'll select everything. So after I've selected everything, I'm gonna go to um, objects, and I'm going to press align and distribute, which is shift control A. And then it'll open up this bar right here, which is the align shortcuts. And I'm just gonna align them to all 
by like the bottom of the letter and then I'm going to distribute them um, equidistantly horizontally. So in Inkscape it actually is interesting. There's lots of different options for like how you can align. So for like even just distributing, like if you've ever seen that on PowerPoint, usually we just distribute equally. But on here you can do it by like the left edges, the right edges, the center of the letter, um, the distance between the letters. So actually what might be a better idea because these are all drastically different widths, the actual letters, is to make the horizontal gaps between each object equal. So I'm going to select the fourth option from the top row. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. This might be a little bit too far apart, but again, like this is just for me to visualize because once I put it into Cricut Design Space, I'm actually going to print these all as separate individual stickers. So you got to remember that like the changes that you make on Inkscape, like you can make them translate to Cricut Design Space, but you also don't have to necessarily. Like just because they're this wide apart on the program doesn't mean I can't put the stickers closer together, you know? Oh, spooky season, sweaters and leaves. Yeah, I'm very excited for the fall. I am a big fan of Halloween, so I'm looking forward to it. Has anyone already decided on their Halloween costumes? I know people come into the makerspace to work on their Halloween costumes. We have plenty of great tools if you're making Halloween costumes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this T a little bit bigger. I'm trying to make them like about the same size so that none of the letters look too small. What I could do is actually change the height of them in here. So I might just do that. Let me select all of them and then make the heights like 50. Okay, so if you select them all at the same time, it'll change the height of them overall. So I'll actually have to select them individually and make them all like a height of 50 millimeters. Again, like it's in millimeters. I kind of just like leave it <laughs> be on whatever setting. Um, you could change it to inches if you want it or like pixels, um, points, percentage. There's plenty of options. I usually just leave it on like whatever is the generic setting. And then when I go to Cricut Design Space, like that's when you'll actually be changing the sizes. I like Cricut Design Space because personally, I'm not that great at visualizing like centimeters and inches. So in Cricut Design Space, which I'll be pulling these up into, there's actually like squares that um, translate to the square of the mats. So that helps me. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about more when I pull it out. Okay, and then this. This made most of them the same size except for the T, so I'm just gonna make the T a little bit bigger. Cause, or I could pick a different T. Let's see. This is why I like to leave my um, my past uh, choices at the bottom of the screen because you might want to come back to them, you know? Like for example, that if that T didn't look right, I can pick a different one. I could just do, like do you see how it looks out of place? It's the same height, but it's not like, I don't know. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick this T and I'll bring this up here. Kind of simple, kind of boring, but sometimes you need like one regular letter to like offset the strangeness of the rest. So if I don't remember which blue I picked here, which I honestly don't remember which blue I picked, um, you, there's a dropper tool on the left side. So I just pick that and then I like select the letters and then now it matches. Yeah, there's lots of cool tools in here. If you're wondering how I'm moving the screen back and forth, I'm just um, using like the mouse to like drag, uh, like, like the rolling part of the mouse, forgot the name. <laughs> Okay, and then now I'll make them all equal again, and then the bottom, okay. And that looks a little bit more correct, you know? If you wanted to go in and make any changes, like for example, I'm gonna make changes to this A, because if I print it out right now, this very thin part of the letter right here, the curve, um, would make it kind of hard to take the sticker off the sticker paper, so. Oh, I have a good eye for design, says Abby. That's so nice. <laughs> I'm very interested in like typography. I think it's fun. Um, I think in, in the design school, they take whole classes on it, which is very interesting. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I, 
changed the mode from the simple like select arrow to the nodes arrow. So this will let you edit the actual letter. So for example, if I have it on the select, I can select this letter, I can make it larger, I can make it skinnier or wider. But if I select edit the nodes, you can actually edit the individual parts of this letter to change the design. That's what I use Inkscape for. That's why I think it's the, it's like a really nice um, like tool to have. Like because these are now vectors, not images. I talked about that earlier. If you guys want me to show you how to do it, I can. But um, you can put images in here like PNGs or JPEGs and you can turn them into vectors, which means no matter how small or big you make the photo, it won't lose any um, quality. But more importantly, it also means you can edit them. So that's what I'm doing right now. So like, the original letter looks like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this curve of the letter thicker. And then I'm going to um, make the space in between these two parts of the letter larger. Just for like readability. Like if you're like super far away, like you can't really tell that um, there's like a space there. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh yeah, and to zoom in and out, I just used um, the plus and minus button. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this node right here, and I'm just going to hit the left arrow key, and that'll bring it in. And then I will select this, and I'll press the up arrow key. What I think I'll do is also bring this in a little bit, because it looks a little wide. And I think I might bring this down. It makes it look a little strange, so maybe I'll put this back up. It's like, sometimes I don't want to change the, the how the letter looks too much, because <laughs> then it can look a little strange, but you can even edit like um, how curved the curves are by using the lines that come off of the nodes, so that's what I'll be doing. Let's see. I want to make this part more curved here, because if you can see, it's like... A little angular so uh, it kind of like messed up this part but what you can do also is like you can turn things into curves so like up here for example like if I just like say make this node smooth it'll do that so let me hit that for the these and it'll like smooth out like the errors almost you can even delete the nodes to see if that would help. Like I just deleted that one. So now this is way more smooth. And let's see if there's like one node and there's like not a lot around it. If you delete it, it might mess up the image. Like for example, it would mess it up like that. So to undo that, I'll just press control Z. There's also an undo button up here, but same difference. Do I have a favorite font? This is my favorite font right now. This one, it's Pillow Lava. I forgot the designer's name, but it's a really interesting font. Um, font, And they have like a second version of it where the letters look like they're melting. If you've ever seen like letters where um, people will make them look like they're chrome, um, this like font is a really good like font to do that with. I think it looks really cool. It was like a new typography trend. Like I think like last year around like when the pandemic started, I assume. That's when I saw it at least, so. Okay, I think I have fixed this. Let me see if I want to bring it in just a little bit more. Okay, and then maybe I should bring... Yeah, I think I'll do it like this. The thing is, like, <laughs> sometimes I get a little sad, like, editing the letters because I think they look so cool, like, when we originally started with them. But some things, it's like, it looks better on a screen, but, like, when you print it, it'll be, like way harder for you to peel it off the sticker paper if it's like this thin so i'm just gonna let it be that way and then like this s let's go in and change this s so if you like zoom in you can actually tell like the points of this are not like one point it's actually like a square so what i do is i think i'll just move these I just hit the arrow keys for that, and then I'll do the same thing here. For the left one, I'll select it and then hit the left arrow key, and for the right one, I'll hit it and then do the right arrow key. And then when I zoom out, like, it just makes it a little bit thicker so that, like, your sticker won't break when you're peeling it off the sticker paper. And then, what else do I want to do? This, 
or the L. I'll bring it up. Usually I wouldn't bother if like I'm making the stickers like really big, but like I usually make my stickers like pretty small. So that's why I like really look at the thickness of the letters to make sure like it won't be too thin if I make the letters like really small. Okay, so this A, also this A. This A looks so cool on the screen, but like if I made it a small sticker, like this sliver would be hard to cut out. So what I'll do is I'll also make this wider. So you can actually select a bunch of nodes at once by just drawing a box over it. So, oops, I'll be drawing a box over the left side of these. And if you want to unselect one, you can hit the shift button. So even what I could do is just hit this node, press shift and then press this one and then that'll select both of them. So then I'll also select these and then I'll hit the right key again. That'll just make it a little bit thicker and then if I want to make it happen on the other side, I can also click all of those. Okay, do I want to bring this down? Yeah, and the letter looks pretty much the same, but it'll be like a little bit easier to peel that away. Oh, and then I'll make this part of the letter a little bit wider by just bringing this up one more time. Okay. And I think that helps the readability of it. So like, even if you were kind of far away, you'd be able to tell like what the letters look like. For this, I might bring it one, make it a little bit bigger. I don't mind making the changes because if you ever don't like it, you can press Control Z. Like, I'll just press Control Z for that. I think it did look better thinner. <laughs> okay, so now I'm done with these letters. Um, I'm gonna decide what colors I want to make them. I think I did this once before. Let me pull it up. I like decide what colors I wanted this when I was making them into embroidery letters, but it's on my laptop, so. Give me one second to figure that out. I've also been making phone stickers a lot for like, um, with the Cricut, you can make like really, really small ones. Like for example, like I made all of these phone stickers. Wait. <laughs> Can't really see much detail because of the light, but you know, <laughs> I like decked out my phone in phone stickers. So the Cricut is like pretty versatile. You can use it to make very small stickers. And if you want to make like a big like sign with vinyl, we actually have a Roland too. And that is just like the same like type of machine. It's not as like, um, it's not like the same as the Cricut, but it cuts out like very large pieces of vinyl. Like if you wanted to make like a stop sign, for example, like that's what you would use. Will this pull up? No? Yes? Maybe? Oh, that is the one thing about opening Inkscape files is like when I open them on my PC, if you open it just regularly, it'll um, open as an image. But if you want to open it in Inkscape, I always open Inkscape first and then open up the file or you can like right click and press open with Inkscape. But yeah, that is something just to know if you ever get confused of like, oh, why is my file like not opening so that I can edit it? Like, that's probably why. And then, okay. I have so many files of these stickers because when I was digital um, embroidering, like I had to make so many changes. <laughs> like I was like, oh, let me make the letters thicker. Let me like change like this setting, that setting. So yeah. Um, reading the chat. I think the G is my favorite. I'm a big fan of the letter A. Yeah, the A is really cool and I like the G. <laughs> okay, so this is the font I have. I'm gonna quickly change these into the colors that I want to make it on the um, Cricut when I actually cut out. Um, something to keep in mind is just because you pick a color like on Inkscape does not mean that's the color it'll print unless you're actually printing it. Since I'm using vinyl, like my choice of vinyl is like what vinyl options are in the makerspace. But I still like changing the colors just um, for visualization. So like when I'm printing it, it's like a little bit easier to remember like, oh, like what colors like do I want stuff. So I'll make this red. I think this was gonna be blue. So I'll just leave that blue. 
And then I'll make this green. This one, I think I was going to make it pink. Or I'll do this one orange. I kind of would just wanted to do it like rainbow, just like so I could show you guys like the different color options of like what's in the space. So let me put this in purple. What colors do we not use yet? <laughs> Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, purple. I guess we'll just do like, let's see, maybe like a peach and then maybe like a darker red. Yeah. When we actually pull out the colors, we'll look at what's there, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah. If I wanted to also do outlines, what I could do is I can make um, like a black letter like around this one. Like I could make the shapes of this like a little bit wider and then put them behind and then I'd have like a black outline for each letter. But I think what I'll do in or maybe should I maybe should I do that? Let's see. Let's see how easy it would be. There is an option in here like on um Inkscape to like put strokes around letters like say for example if I went to fill in stroke which is um shift control f you can add like a um a stroke to a letter very easily you would just like make this solid say I want a black one and then I would just increase this and there you'd have like an outline but like you also have to remember like what will translate to a cricket versus what is just on Inkscape. So like while the stroke option is an option on Inkscape to make an outline on the letter, if you actually wanted to do it on the cricket, you would have to cut the black out separately from the red, at least if you're doing it with vinyl. And then um, you'd have to stick the red on top of the black. So for example, if I, let me press Control Z. Or actually, if you just hit this, the stroke will go away. So say, for example, I wanted to make this sticker out of vinyl and I wanted to have an um, outline on it. I would just duplicate this and then drag it over here. And then I would hit shift control F to go to stroke. I would make the stroke solid. And then I guess this will be my the stroke size for the letter. Um, and what I would actually do now is also fill in the fill as the same color as the outline. And this could be a sticker that you printed out. So you would put this sticker down first on whatever you're putting it on. Say I'm putting on a water bottle. I would put the black on the water bottle first, and then I would put the red on top. Oop, let me hit raise to top. And then I would put the red on top like that. And then you'd have an outline. It's a good idea sometimes. It's like kind of hard to get it exact, but if you make it like, very like um thick outline then you'll probably be able to match it up like pretty correctly so i guess i would do outlines for this i'll probably do them really fast what i would do though is just select all of them um, press Control c Control v and then you have a second set of letters here i'll press shift Control f and then i would just fill these fill these in black. So I'll just select like a dark color here. Um, yep. And then I'll hit stroke style and I'll change it from percent to uh, millimeters just cause it's, this is also in millimeters. And then I'll just make it a little bit thicker, I think. Or first I have to make the stroke correct. Okay. Not five millimeters, <laughs> maybe one. <laughs> or I guess um, two. And then you can see, like, let me pick black, so it's actually all black. Okay, black, and then fill also black. And then I'll just group these, so I'll press Control G to group them. And I'll also group on top. Shift, or no, Control G. Okay, and that's grouping them. That'll just make it easier, like, when you're moving around, you don't have to, like, move it out exactly. And I'll just move this on top. And that's what it would look like. So I added like two millimeters of outline, but I think I'll actually just make it thicker. Otherwise, like, you know, you have to line it up like so perfectly when you like make the stickers in real life um, that it would be like kind of a hassle. So 
I will make it a little bit thicker. Maybe instead of uh, two millimeters, I would do like three. Okay, and let's see again what happens. Okay, yeah, this works. If you notice, if you like look really closely, like there are gaps in the outlines and we can fix that. So basically let me move this or I'll just send this to the back. I'll go to um, the same like fill and stroke options. And what I would do is there's like orders down here. And like sometimes like this will fix like the do I have to ungroup them first? Okay. Sometimes this will like fix like how the outlines look. So for example, if you notice like this was on like, I think the corner option, but if I want to make them curved, I can do that. If I want to have the round cap versus like a square cap, that'll like change whether you have like straight corners or rounded ones. And then you can even change like the order of the fill or like the stroke, like, but I don't really do that if I'm making stickers. I think that's something that's more important if you're doing like embroidery or if you're like just drawing on here, but I changed those two settings. So now like everything should be filled and then I'm going to send this to the back again. So, oops, I guess I should select all of them because I ungrouped it. Okay. And now, oh wait, you have to select the black ones individually. And then send them to the back. This isn't like perfect because like some of the things are touching, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out right now. Or I could take a second. Let's see. I'll give myself two minutes. Sometimes I get too caught up into the details, and then it's like, <laughs> when will we make the actual stuff, you know? <laughs> so I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Most of these letters, like, they're fine, like even though this is like super thin there, it's like, I don't feel like changing it right now because then I'd also have to change the A on the top. But this is easy, like, I can just select these two and bring them down, or can I? You might have to bring it down like a lot further just because like the stroke is so thick on this. So I'm just hitting the up arrow key for this one. And then for this one, I might as well just like have the whole thing be filled in. So I'll just like move these. So it's filled in now. And then for this end, I'll change this a little bit. And then can I actually just like delete one of these? Oh, nope. Did that change the curve too much? Uh, I think it's okay. <laughs> and let's just see like, did we make like any unforgivable changes when we like put these letters back on? So again, control G and then I'll just move these up here. Oh wait, what I can actually do, control G. I'm just gonna go to the align option just to make sure and see what happens. So I'll just hit these and then I'll press align in the middle and then align this way too. Okay, so for example, so you see how like we edited this, the N and the S? I might actually just hit Control Z because if you see like there's no outline on the top and then for this, it looks a little strange. So I'll just hit Control Z until like the changes are gone and I'll just leave it like this. So now we're good to print. So what we would do now is we would hit file, um, save. First, you should always save your file. I should have saved it a little bit more like as long as I went because sometimes um, like if your computer can't handle the program or if you're doing like a lot of things really fast, like Inkscape can crash on you. I've had that happen before and like lost progress. So I'll say like, Always make sure you save like every few minutes. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so I'm gonna save this as nostalgia stickers, save, and then, yeah. I think I might 
I know I keep changing this, <laughs> but I'm just gonna make the stroke on this just a little bit thicker. Since they're already all touching anyway, I might just make it easier on myself to combine the letters. So, first let me move these. I'm gonna grab all of this. Wait, after I do the shift control. It's like sometimes the making stickers, it's like I'm very detail oriented, so I make it like take longer than it really needs to take <laughs> but that's like the fun part of it for me i like trying to make the stickers like perfect on the first try if you're more of a like oh, i just want to do it and then see what happens that's also a good idea okay and then i'll just hit file save and now what we can do is we can export it onto cricut design space so let's wait for that to pull up. The multiple colors really make it pop. Yeah, I definitely like, I like doing stuff um, with like a rainbow color palette, but not in like the order of the rainbow. Cause I feel like sometimes like the order of the rainbow makes it like so expected, you know? <laughs> like if I did it like red, orange, yellow, green, I could just do it like rearrange the colors. So it's not Roy G. Biv. And then it like makes it pop a little bit more. Cause it's like, the colors are next to um, their like opposite colors instead of like complementary colors. I forgot the name, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, and let's see, did our Cricut Design Space open? Cricut Design Space is also a free software, so I totally recommend downloading it on your computer because that's what I plug the Cricut into when I use the Cricut, so. I'm gonna sign in. I think I just, is it pulling up on the screen? I just sign up with my like student email and then use that. It should be free, so. And let's see if I can pull up the Cricut on here as well. I'm gonna close Inkscape and give me a few like seconds or like maybe a minute to see if I can pull up design space on this like live stream. So what I'm gonna do is okay. Yeah, but this is a free software. Definitely try it out. Um, I've definitely made like a lot of stickers because I think personally like it's um, like a pretty easy like uh, machine to get started on in the makerspace. So if you ever are like, oh, I don't know what I would even do in the makerspace or like what I would like make there, uh, definitely check out the Cricut. I think there's like lots of cool ways to utilize it. Um, we had people come in to like make like recycling and like trash stickers for like their trash cans and recycling. So it's like good for labels too. I know that there's been like this new trend where people um, buy like spice label containers off of like Etsy. You could make them, so that is always an option. Okay. Still figuring out how to share my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. And then let me move this. Okay. So I'm gonna share it this way. Okay, so what we have here is like, oops, is this over here? Is this showing on the screen? <laughs> One second, guys. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's technical difficulties, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. <laughs> So what I have here is I have the um, Cricut like design space open. Again, like this is a free, free software, like definitely check it out. And like the first thing that it will pull up on is the login screen. And I use my student email and password. Didn't ask me to pay anything because it's free software. So I sign up that way. And then now what you can do is you can hit new project. Oh yeah, those those projects that I had like over there, like those were once stickers that I've already made already. So like your past projects will save on your account. That was like a sticker I made for a water bottle and then I had my phone stickers on there. So once you have um, 
the Cricut Design Space open, what you can do is you can hit um, new for a new project or you can hit um, upload to like upload an image. So we're gonna hit upload and then we're gonna upload like our, um, the design that we just made. So ours is in just downloads, <laughs> can't speak. Um, oh, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to delete like all the extra letters at the bottom, but that's okay. Cause we can actually just delete it in, um, like the Cricut design space. So I'm gonna hit the finish button. Oh, I should just move this camera to the top. Cause I think for the Cricut, there's like a bunch of buttons on the bottom. So I will just make that executive decision. <laughs> so now on the left hand side, like it'll show you your most recently uploaded image. So you can see like past images that I've like opened. So this one, and then I'm gonna hit add to canvas and it'll pull up all of the stickers as you can see all of the black ones are in there that's like the interesting thing about svgs is it will separate um everything oops it will separate everything into like its own individual letters so i'm gonna go ahead and delete most of these because i'm not actually going to use them so give me one second okay so what you can do is actually if I just go down until I see them, you can do the same thing. Like you can select these or wait, is it grouped? Then you would have to ungroup them. So you just right click and you press ungroup until I guess, yeah, they're all separate now. And you can do the same thing that you did in Inkscape and you can just like draw a square over the ones that you don't want. Backspace will delete them. So I'm just going to draw a square to select them and then I think if you want to zoom out, you can also press the minus button. It'll zoom out. Let's see if that works. I might have zoomed too far out. <laughs> oh, wait, let's see. Okay. Let me delete this backspace. Okay. So what I'll do here is actually, instead of pressing the minus, you can press in the um, lower left corner, like the, um, minus button to zoom out so i'll do that because i lost my letter sometimes this happens like because design space is like it'll just like expand forever like you might just like lose where you put your stickers and that's why i zoom out and then now that i see them i'm just gonna move them all to like the top left corner and then i'll zoom back in so back down here okay and as you can see, it actually separated the black and the colored part. Oh, what is interesting? Oh, I didn't realize this. Okay, we might have made an oopsie daisy. So, <laughs> what I was saying about the um, stroke like functions before in Inkscape is you do have to be careful like when you are exporting it to a different software, like whether the stroke will count or not. Like for example, I think on the embroidery machine, if you use the stroke, it'll um, count as like an outline in the embroidery machine. But when you're making stickers, it doesn't. I got it mixed up, I thought it was the other way around. But as you can see, like the stroke did not um, translate into Inkscape. So like these colorful letters are the same size as the black letters. So, what we will do now is I think we will just make the colored letters and if we have time we'll go back and we can make the larger ones but I think these will still look really good just by themselves on like say a water bottle because my water bottle is just like it's a glass one like it's an old kombucha bottle so you know these will pop out no matter what color the background is um, or if you want to just like not make a black outline you can put it on a black surface or a white surface and that'll really make the colors pop so I am going to delete these by just hitting backspace and then you'll have this and I'm gonna move it up here and as you can see on the right hand side all of the um what is it all of the letters are their own individual um like shapes so they're not gonna all print at once because they're not grouped if you wanted to print them all the same color you could just group them and you could print them all in like black or red but because i want to print them as different colors it's actually a good thing that um these are separate so when you're printing using the cricut something that's important to know is like it will print exactly what is on the screen so 
For example, if this is all on the screen, it'll all it'll print all of them. But what you can do is you can actually hide all of the letters except for the ones that you want to print. So for example, I want to start with the N. So I would hide everything that wasn't the N. What I'll do right now is I'll also ungroup these just because they are grouped. You can tell when things are grouped if let me move my my head on this. <laughs> you can tell stuff is grouped if they're under the same drop down arrow. So this is all under the same drop down arrow. So I'll just ungroup them and then now they're actually all separate. So I will just get rid of all of them except for the letter N. And then when you make it, you would just press make it. And it would show you like, oh, how big is it on the size of the map and let me go grab the map right now so i can show you guys what exactly i am talking about so this is like a cricket map for example as you can see if you look closely like there is like white guiding lines on them. So the size of the guiding lines is exactly what it's showing like right here. So that, like what the size is showing is a little bit too big. So I'm going to hit cancel and I'm gonna make all of the letters smaller. So sometimes it's like a little bit nicer when they're all grouped because you can just like hit them all at the same time. I might just group them again. <laughs> so I'll press right click and group and then I could just like Oh, did not group. Group. Okay. And then you can like select them all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to make them smaller. I like my stickers to be smaller. It's up to you what size you want to make yours. I usually make mine about like the size of one square. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. So like this would be like the size of a square from further away. That's just like the size I prefer them to be, like a little bit on the smaller side, because I put like a lot of stickers on my stuff, so I don't want them to be too big. So I think if I look at the mat, you can see it goes from the number zero to 12. So if I flip the mat to the side that has like the larger set of numbers, zero to 12 is like, from the edge of the mat to my finger. So it's like this whole part, I mean, it's like reversed. It's like this whole part of the um, sheet. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how big I'm gonna print out. I think that's a pretty good size. Um, yeah. So now I'm gonna actually unselect all of them. And can I select? Yeah, I can just select the end. So, you know, grouping it is actually pretty convenient. I didn't realize that you could just select one or the other, you know? Um, that's going to look ep epic on a water bottle. Yeah, I think so too. That's why I like reusing the bottles that I already have because then you can have a bunch of water bottles. I can have more water bottles to stick to stick stickers on, you know? Okay, so as, as it's showing on the screen, I'm just going to double check the size of it, like on my mat. If it's too big or too small when you actually print it, it's not the end of the world. You can just print it again, just move the vinyl paper over, but again I like to see what size it'll be before I print it so let's see again let me flip this paper over so it'll be in between the size of one and two okay this is still a little bit bigger than I wanted so I'm gonna hit cancel again and make them even smaller I guess I'll like drop it to like, to there, okay. Oh, and even as you can see this on here, like it will still print all of them separately if you wanted to just like print them all at the same time. I've actually not tried this setting out before. I think it's because it's grouped, like they're all individually. I've actually never seen this before, but this is pretty cool. So what I could do, let me see, is it exactly in the same order as here? I don't think so because the A was first. Hey, we'll try this out. I'm always wanting to try out like whatever happens first. Okay, so as you can see, like the reason they're on different mats is because like they're 
their different colors. So this will actually make it like a lot faster to print because instead of having to come back and hit make it continue, hit all the settings for like every sticker, all you'd have to do for this is hit the settings once and then switch out the colors. So I'm gonna do it this way. And then I'm gonna press continue and it'll give you the instructions like, oh, you have to like turn on your Cricut. Um, so I'm gonna do that. What I will actually have to do is y'all have to give me one minute as I transfer this file onto my laptop. Because <laughs> what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to print this um, from my laptop because I want to be able to show you guys um, me printing the Cricut, like printing on the Cricut through the overhead camera behind me. So what I'm going to do is switch back to browser window. And I'm gonna open the Inkscape again so you guys can see that on here while I like transfer this to my laptop and then print it through that. So if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask while I just email this file to myself. That's what I also like about using the Cricut. It's like um, pretty easy to like transfer the files. Like it's not like the program is so big that like you can only have it on like a school laptop or like um, a laptop for the makerspace because you can um do that with like certain softwares like for example like Kira Lulzbot like 3d printing software you can put it on your computer but I prefer to just have it like use it on like the Macs and the makerspace but this one I like having on my computer because then I can make the stickers like at home and stuff I guess it's just what you use more like I make more stickers than I 3d print so I have the sticker software on my computer instead of the 3d printing software they don't take up that much space if anybody is worried about that, but yeah, that was like a, like last semester when I downloaded um, the Kira Lulzbot software. I also had a lot of software for my academic classes. So I was like, you know, gotta get rid of one. <laughs> and Kira was what I ended up getting rid of. So, okay, um, let me email this to myself. Okay. Yeah, and I do like how these files are small enough to be go to like send over email. You don't even have to upload it to the drive, which is really nice. So I'll just attach the file. Okay, and I'll just email it to myself and I'll do it on my laptop and then we can see if I can show you guys how to print this. I think we have like an hour of the live stream left, so honestly, like pretty good pacing. <laughs> Sometimes I spend a little bit too much time on Inkscape because like if you try to get all the details correct and everything, you know, it could take a while. But sometimes it's easier to just like make the sticker and then fix it afterwards. Because <laughs> a lot of details that like you might see on Inkscape might not actually like matter that much when you're printing them in real life because like the print will be so small. That's if you're making a small sticker. That's also why I like making the small stickers. It's like the imperfections show less, so you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm just pulling this up on my laptop and I'm just gonna download it and then open it on Cricut Design Space on my own laptop and I'll make it about the same size. While we're waiting, does anyone have any questions on Inkscape or the Cricut Design Space? If you do any, any if you do have any questions, um, you can always come to the Makerspace and ask for some help um, on how to use the Cricut if you don't know how to. And everyone in there is very nice. And I think we all know how to use a Cricut at the Makerspace, so it should be pretty easy. It is a, like a very easy machine. Once you do it like once or twice, like you're pretty much good. So, as I said before, like the um, learning curve is like very fast for this. And definitely check out like the other options. I say start with the stickers, and then once you get the stickers, you can like try putting like the. Um, transfer stickers on clothing or you can use the markers i haven't tried the markers yet so you'll be ahead of me if you try them but i think it, it would be very cool okay okay almost done deleting these letters
Oh, Claire said, I agree. Everyone in the makerspace is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's definitely a fun place to like check out. There's like a bunch of stuff in there if you haven't checked out the makerspace already. We have like 3D printing machines, like a laser cutter, um, a vacuum seal. That's like the big stuff, but we also have like a bunch of craft supplies if you're just interested in um, crafting like um, even like popsicle sticks. We have super glue in there, like craft glue, like pom poms. If you just want to make cards, like we have card stock, pretty good like um, place to prepare like any sort of crafts. There's also embroidered thread. I've been thinking of making friendship bracelets in there. Could be fun. <laughs> okay, so now I have all of the stickers on my laptop and I think I've made them the same size as they were here. So I'm gonna start on actually printing these. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make this a lot bigger because this is going to be our actual display and I'm going to move the camera around a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. Just adjust this really quickly. I always feel like seeing the camera being adjusted like when someone's using it is so funny. Okay. <laughs> so just to explain like what materials we're using. So like this is the Cricut Maker. Like this is, there's like a few different Cricuts. This is the one that we have in the space. And this is the one that I'll be showing you guys how to use. There's only three buttons on this one, and it's very, like, the reason it's very easy to use is because the, whichever button you're supposed to press will blink on and off. So there's a few different buttons. I'll just turn this around and then explain them before I start. Let's see. It's not too heavy of a machine, but there's definitely some weight to it. So if you want to open it, what you'll do is you'll just lift this middle part up and then the bottom will automatically drop. And if you want to turn it on, first you have to plug it in. But <laughs> if you want to turn it on, there's the on button here. And then this, this arrow on the left side is, can you guys see this? Let me check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to have to zoom a little bit. Okay. That's better, okay. So the button on the top on the left hand side is the on button, so when you wanna turn on the machine, that's what you would press. And then the first um, button on the left hand side, the arrow, is actually what you'll use when you put the Cricut mat inside. So like for example, once you peel the paper off of this, you would put this mat into the Cricut I'm going to have to zoom out for you guys to see this part, so. This blue sheet goes into the Cricut just like this after you stick the vinyl on. And if you want to make it go into the machine just to load it in, you'd hit this arrow button, the first one. And then the second button, the Cricut logo, is what you would press when you want to actually cut out the design. And then the pause button on the right hand side you won't have to use that very often but say for example like your vinyl gets like stuck in the machine or you just like want to pause because you want to readjust like how things are on the mat you hit the pause and it would just pause where it's cutting and then the left hand button with the arrow would start blinking and you could just um, hit that to pull out the mat so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring my laptop over and we're gonna plug in the machine and we're gonna start making stickers so, let's see. First thing to do is find your nearest outlet in the makerspace if you're using this in the makerspace. There's actually um, many like outlets in the makerspace attached to the ceiling. There's like these orange bowls and you can um, actually just pull them down and then plug in your appliances into there. But because I'm in a streaming room right now, I'm gonna plug this into like a just an outlet. So let's do that. Oop, did the camera turn off? Okay. 
it seems we're having technical difficulties. <laughs> Give me a second and we'll see if we can get the camera back working. Seems like the camera needs a new battery, so we're just going to switch that out, and then we'll get back onto the stream. <laughs> so give us a few minutes. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> it was just like the batteries out. So I'll get back to setting this up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the nearest outlet, plug the Cricut in, and then I'll show you guys how to um, actually plug your computer into the Cricut, and then we'll just get started on um, making these stickers. So let me do that. I have to zoom out of this a little bit just to show you guys like the whole setup. So I'm actually gonna move this back. And as you can see, this is my laptop. It's pulled up to the crazy design space, and we're gonna work on plugging this in. So here are the two different cords. There's one that you'll actually plug into the Cricut and there's one that she'll plug out into a uh, source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in first. Okay. And just to show you guys like how to plug it in, I'll just be moving this. So on the back of the Cricut, there's actually two wires for two outlets where you plug stuff in. So on the left hand side is where you plug the machine in right here. And then on the right hand one, that's where you would plug in your um, cord to your laptop. So I'm going to turn this back around. And it's just like a USB port, so it should connect to most computers. And then we have charging port. And now it should turn on. So again, to on it, you would just want this. And then you hit the on button. And you can see it turns on because it'll start moving and also the light will turn white. So let's just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. I'm just going to zoom it into the Cricut instead of my laptop. So let's see. Okay. Camera adjusted. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually put this mat on the table right here and we'll select what color we want out of this giant box of like different colors of vinyl so in here like this will be in the maker space if you walk to the maker space it's in the back shelf like on the left hand side so you would just open this and then select the sticker color that you wanted on my laptop the first sticker that we're going to do is the red sticker so 
I'll just open this box and I will pick a red sheet of sticker vinyl and then we'll put this on the mat and start printing. So for example, you can use like any size of sticker vinyl, like this is not even square, but it'll still work for our purposes today. So what you would do is you would get the sticker vinyl and you would just place it onto like wherever you put your design. The automatic place that it'll go in the Cricut design space is the left hand corner. So I always stick my sticker sheets on the left hand corner and then you just smooth it down we have like a bunch of tools like if you want to smooth it down like for example this roller i'll just roll the cricket onto this just to get rid of any air bubbles or like just to make sure it sticks properly and you would just load it in this way and then this is when you would want to like make sure you select all of your settings on your cam on your laptop so that's what i'll be doing I should show you guys my laptop so that you know what settings to pick. So for example, like it says vinyl, so we'll select vinyl here. And then now that we selected vinyl, that's the only setting that you really have to select to be very honest. Um, and it'll give you the instructions, which I'll be showing you. So it's really easy because whichever button you're supposed to press on the Cricut, if you notice, it starts blinking. So on this one, it's telling you to hit the arrow key. So I just hit this and it loads the color in. You wanna make sure that you're holding the Cricut, like the sheet down here at like the level that the Cricut is um, holding it as well. So it doesn't fall out. Like if you don't hold it, your um, sheet could fall out. So I always make sure I hold it. And now the second button is flashing. So we hit that. And you can see the cricket in work now. <laughs> and once it moves a little bit back out, that's when you know it's done. Also because the arrow button will start flashing again if you can see it. So I just hit that and it'll roll out and now you have your sticker. So what I'm gonna do is you can just peel the sheet off yourself. and this is our sticker on here and I'll cut it out and peel the back in the way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these all aside for now and we'll cut them out later I'll change like the overhead settings of the camera so that you guys can see what's going on so for now I'm just going to check the chat to see if there's any questions so give me a second for that The little cutout on the desk looks like it belongs in your design. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, okay. So, okay. I'm just making sure you guys can see the flashing lights. Yeah, you can. So, on there, as you can see, like, the little arrow key is um, flashing. That's because the second design that we chose is already ready and loaded. So, now we just have to put that sheet on. I actually didn't know that this was a setting. Like last time I was making stickers and I was using multiple colors, I was like hitting the settings every time because I didn't know you could load multiple designs in at once. So now what we're gonna do is the next color is, what color is the next color? Oh, it's our A, so it's pink, okay. So I'm gonna grab like a pink color out of here and that's what we'll do. Okay, this is the color we're gonna use. Again, just stick it onto the left hand side. If you ever get confused on like what side of the mat goes in first, the side of the mat that has the arrow at the top, like little arrow cut out, that's the side that you would put into the machine. So that's where I'm gonna stick the sticker. I mean, our vinyl, I should say. And I just line it up. 
we're going to use this to make sure everything is stuck onto the mat so that nothing comes out when we're putting it into the Cricut. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Like this process is pretty easy now. It's going to be the same thing for all of the rest of the stickers. And we just hit the second button. make sure that my stickers didn't go off the edge of the vinyl when I peel them off because sometimes that can be the case. And then our next color is orange. I usually pick out all of my colors ahead of time <laughs> just, like, just to make sure that they go together. But today I guess we are picking it as we go. Okay, here's our orange. Again like, see like for this piece of orange like these edges won't line up with the top corner. If this was the case, like what you can actually do is when you're lining up like, oh like where do I wanna print my sticker on the mat? You can actually change where it would go on the mat. So like if I was doing this um, on the Cricut and I knew I was just gonna use this sheet, I would move the letter, what letter is it? The letter L. I would move the letter L on the mat so it was like down like here instead of like in the top. So then that way you don't have to worry about it. I might actually have to do that right now. So I'm gonna zoom in on the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how I would do that, so. Okay, so for example, let's see. Let me check if there are any questions. Picking out the colors is the hardest part, definitely was. <laughs> That's what I spend the most time on, what can I say? Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hit cancel in the lower left part of the screen, and it's gonna say, do you sh are you sure you wanna cancel the cut? And I'm gonna say yes. I'm sorry this is a little bit blurry for you guys. I'm not like screen sharing, I'm showing you guys on my laptop, so forgive me. But what you can do is you can actually select this and you can move it like where you put it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna stick my orange on the mat and then I am going to figure out where on the mat it is and then move the letter L that way. So I'm just gonna press this down. I'm just using the rolling pin to like roll this design on here and I'll show you guys my mat. As you can see like, oh, this is kind of blurry. Okay, as you can see my sticker like starts like halfway on the mat as you can see it's not in the lot top left corner but the lucky thing about um crickets is that there's actually a number at the top so this number is the number five so on my lock top what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this letter l past the number five and that way i know like it won't get cut off like when i'm printing it so i'm going to press is i'm going to press let me just make sure it doesn't change anything yeah, and you can just change it individually. So as you can see, for the letter L, it's in the middle of the map, but if you look at all of the other colors on the left-hand side, it doesn't move. Okay, so it's gonna ask, please connect your maker, and you'll hit vinyl, and then you can just load your colors in again. So that's what we do. It's like a very simple, easy fix so that like, you don't have to waste like any vinyl that you're using. I always try to like move my prints to like the best area so we don't have to like cut off vinyl and throw it away, you know? But it's up to you. The one thing that I will say about doing like this technique is like you gotta make sure your letters don't get cut off so we're lucky in this case the letters did not get cut off, but I have, I have had in the past where like, I didn't quite move the letter to the right spot and then it, we had to like, I had to redo it, you know? <laughs> so it just kind of depends on like what you're able to do. So now the next color is, what is the next color? 
then I'm just going to hit edit to see what color, what it is. And it's the letter I. Is this one also orange? I'm going to hit cancel and check what our design says. Cancel. Okay. So, so far we've done, oh, the orange. Oh, okay. I remember now. The eye was supposed to be like a peach color. I'm, what I'm going to pick is I'm going to make it, um, what color do we make the A? The A is pink, so I'm going to make the eye dark red because that was our original plan. Oop, I realize I'm not showing you guys the screen. I like just pulled up the screen again because <laughs> I need to check what colors are what colors. So now that I've decided that, I'm going to press make it and I'm going to just follow the same steps as before and continue making. Already done the O, we've done the L here. Okay, and I'm gonna find a dark red and I'm gonna cut this out. Okay, we found our dark red. And I'm just gonna put this in the left hand corner, smooth it out. And load it up. And while that's cutting, we're going to see if there are any more questions. <laughs> This one's done. And the next color is yellow, so. As you can see, like, when we were printing that, like, this corner got folded up because we didn't stick it down properly. So, again, like, always make sure that, like, you stick it down. Just because, like, if more of it had gotten stuck, you could, like, temporarily, like, not temporarily, you could possibly mess up your design. So, you want to be careful. And the next color is green, so I'll look for the green. Oh, wow, a square that no one has used. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> or we could do a bright green. Let's see. I'll put more of this bright green because it's like in a pop. So again, just put this in the corner. That's why it's important to smooth over like the whole sticker like sheet of vinyl that you're sticking on because like almost the whole mat goes into the machine and then comes back out. So don't just smooth over where your sticker is going to be, smooth out over everything. Okay. And then we're done with the T. We only have one letter left I think. And then now for the last letter we'll do a blue. There are many, many shades of blue in here. We could do any of these. I think I'll go with this light blue. I always use this blue when I make stickers, so I'm gonna switch to this one, you know? For some variety. Okay. And 
you can t if you can't tell what I'm doing, I'm just using this to like smooth down like all the corners. Honestly, the mat is pretty like heavy grip anyway, so you don't have to like press that hard, but definitely do if you think that sheet of vinyl needs it. so lucky today none of our stickers have went off the sheet of vinyl <laughs> usually when I make stickers there's always one sheet that does okay oh that wasn't our last we have one more actually and that one's purple so let's find purple the purple we're using. I was looking for the lighter one, but this one is actually really nice. So we're gonna use this, smooth it down with this roller. Gosh, wait, there's one more. How many stickers do we have left? <laughs> is this the last one? <laughs> I feel like I keep saying this is the last one, but then there's another one. Okay, well, this one's pink. Very lucky we'll use this hot pink color. I already picked this one out. It was so bright, I know I had to use it. It's giving a very neat Barbie. Okay. I try to pick like all the kind of like same hue or like, you know, like the same type of saturation, like same level of saturation. Because I feel like if you pick like really dark colors and really light colors, it can kind of look like it doesn't match, but I tried to pick colors that were all like very saturated, so. Okay. I do think this one's the last one. And then we can cut them out and we can use like the little tools that come with the Cricut to then like pick out the stickers from the backgrounds. These stickers will probably come off the sheet very easily. So, we'll be fine. Sometimes I make stickers that are like very, very small. So like for those stickers, like it takes more time to like peel the sticker off the backing than it does to actually make the sticker. Okay, so that was in fact the last sticker that we had to make. So once you are done using the um like the mat you do have to make sure that you put the plastic sheet back on it so i'll show you guys what that looks like it's just a clear plastic sheet that looks like this and you just want to make sure that you put it back onto the mat and that'll actually just protect like the stickiness what i've always thought was interesting about these cricket mats is even though it's the mat is sticky you can actually wash it with soap and after it's dry it'll be sticky again i don't know what kind of technology that is but it's very interesting <laughs> okay so i'm gonna just take a look to see if there's any questions um in the chat and then if not we'll start cutting out these stickers and peeling them off their backings okay Do you have a favorite sticker you've made? Yeah, I like the stickers that I made for my phone case and I also made a few stickers for my water bottles, but my favorite sticker would have to be like, 
I don't have my water bottle on me. I have like a really big version of the sticker on it, but let me show you guys right here. So if you see like on my phone case, if it'll focus. Yeah, those little flowers with like the smiley faces on them. <laughs> I wish I had my water bottle. I had like a very big version of that on it. But um, yeah, like I just made like a flower design and then on the circle, um, I put a smiley face on it and I did like different expressions and I made them in different colors. So that was really fun. It was super easy. Like I just had to make different versions of faces and then it, yeah, it was very fun. That was my favorite sticker. I've also cut out like my name in like a cool font. Or like, I did some little flames on the back of my thing. As you can see, like, this is very decked out. So I made a bunch of stickers for that. Um, you can find like ideas off of Pinterest, like as long as it's not like, um, you're like copying people's like intellectual property. Like I just looked on there for inspiration on like st um, shapes or like what type of stickers that I did. Like I did like some flower stickers, like leaf stickers. Um, I did like a music note. Um, some like swirly like zigzag like confetti shapes and then I just stuck that on my phone and you know it was pretty good you can um I think you can re like make um designs that you've seen online if you're not selling it but that's honestly a very slippery slope so I would not recommend it <laughs> you know you don't want to get in trouble for anything that you shouldn't be doing so um now we have like 15 20 minutes of this I would say 15 minutes of this um stream left so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to show you guys how to peel the stickers off the backing let's see if i can just flip the screen and then i can sit down so let's see okay ignore the camera for now <laughs> <laughs> what i'm going to do is i'm going to sit down and i'm going to actually Oh, maybe I should have actually focused the camera before I flipped it, you know? That would make it a little bit easier. But I'm going to sit over there, and I'm going to show you guys how to peel apart the stickers. Okay. And give me a second. I'm just going to move all my stuff. So. When you put away, like, all the stuff in the maker space, you're going to have to unplug, like, your laptop from the wires, and you're going to have to put all the mats away. But because I'm not in the maker space right now, I will do that when I get back down there. So, there's also many different ways to use this Cricut. So, exactly what I showed you right now, it'll be the same process, but you can actually. Um, I know there's like a way to cut out fabric. I think you need a special blade for it. I'm not sure if we have it in the makerspace, but that is an option. And then also, there's the vinyl that sticks directly onto clothing. Um, there's also markers. So, if you can actually see, like, on, oh well, I guess I reversed the camera so it's too late to show you, but <laughs> um, on the Cricut, there's a place to put markers and you can actually do that, so. Let's see. Maybe, actually, I would not be flipping this camera because it kind of makes it hard to like, oh, I just realized this camera was on too. <laughs> This makes it kind of hard to like see what like what exactly I'm showing you guys. So I'm just gonna unflip it again, and let's see. We're going to now cut out these stickers. So let me unzoom. And is it focused? Let me check. Yeah. Okay. So these are all the sheets that we have. We're gonna cut them out with the scissor first. And then we actually have this whole box of tools, which you can then use to um, like peel apart your stickers off. So it's kind of hard to see like where exactly I've turned the stickers when you're like further away. So I'm gonna do my best to show you guys like when I peel them off. So I try to cut as close as possible to the sticker. Just because you want to leave like a lot of vinyl for people to use. So we're going to go through this quickly so that you guys can see the actual fun part peeling it away. But here's the purple. And we're going to cut it. Okay. This is 
kind of easy because we printed them all in the corners so I can like tell where I printed them. Obviously when you're closer you can see the lines as well, but when you're a little bit further like on this camera you're not going to be able to tell like where we put stuff, but that's okay. You'll see the stickers in like a few seconds. This was our letter L, this is our letter A, and then we just have our last letter left, this was our O. Okay, now pull all the stickers. These were all the stickers that we made. Let me adjust this camera. <laughs> so it's a little bit more like easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. So. Okay, so that will be the stickers. And then now we'll peel them away. So they're on the table and we have this whole box right here of tools that we can use. So my favorite ones are usually like the tweezers. So we'll just open this. And we'll take out these tweezers. If it'll focus. Yeah. And these are like really puny, so like really like detail oriented. So it'll help you pick out the actual stickers from here. And it looks like the chat is going, so let's see what they're saying before I continue. Oh, those tools are super helpful. Yeah, they really are. I think um, it really helps you get the detail. Again, for like the phone stickers I made, like they were so um, small. So like I really had to use like these tweezers to peel them apart. So first thing we'll do is I actually like to use this rolling tool. There's a few tools here that do the same thing. So let me show you guys what they are. So what you can do is you can actually either use just like this rolling tool and go over the sticker just to make sure the sticker is adhering to the backing. Or you can take this tool and just smooth it over the sticker. And that'll just make sure like when you're peeling the part that is not the sticker off of the backing that your sticker doesn't also come with it. If that happens, like you can always peel it, um, like peel the sticker backing and then put the actual sticker back onto it, but I would just avoid it if you could. So what we're actually doing is trying to lift the sticker away from the edge. So as you can see, if you get enough on, you just peel it with your fingers and you have like the leftover part of it. So I'll just stick that to the side and then you'll have to peel like the inside part away so like that and then this would be our letter A. So now we're going to do the rest of the letters and I'm going to show you guys on the overhead cam like what it looks like so now I'm going to peel away the orange part. Again you just want to get the tweezers like on the edge and then you can just like peel the excess vinyl away. So now we have our L. And then we'll do our I next. Again, like it's right here. And then you want to try and get the excess away. Okay. That was very smooth. Okay. So then now we'll just keep going. Again, like this is pretty fast because the um, stickers are larger, so this won't take too long. We have our letter N. And then now we're 
leaving that red one for the last because it has the most parts to it. So <laughs> we have our teeth. And then obviously since these letters are like bigger and there's not like that much detail though, like the um, backing peels away super easily. But definitely like if you're doing like a more intricate or a smaller sticker, I would do this process a little bit slower just to make sure you don't like, you know, peel your sticker off the back. These are pretty big, so. And then for this red, we'll just peel this right away. Oh. So, something that I would keep in mind is for this red, because they're all actually individual pieces and they're not connected into the same place, it's not as easy as putting, like, say, for example, I just peel this A off and peel it off the backing and then stick it onto like a water bottle or like a notebook because it's all one piece. This is not one piece and if you don't want to go through the hassle of, of making it exactly and like um, making it exactly line up on whatever you're putting it on, we actually have this really helpful transfer paper in the um, maker space. So let me let that focus. We have this giant roll. Let me zoom out so you can see how big it is and how to use it. We have this big roll of transfer paper, and what you can actually do is you can cut out like um, a sheet of it, and then stick it on your stickers just so like um, like when you're placing it on something, it'll stick to the transfer paper instead of the sticker backing, and then you can then stick the transfer paper onto your like water bottle or whatever you're putting it on, and then peel the transfer paper away. So. Um, because I don't have anything to put these stickers on right now, I'm just going to show you guys what it would look like lined up. And then I am going to put transfer paper on all of them so that when, or not all of them, just I'll just put it on this one. Because <laughs> honestly, these stickers are really big, so I don't think I would need transfer paper to put them on something. I can just stick them on. But again, the transfer paper, you're always welcome to use it, ex especially if you want to get something um, exactly lined up with um, like, from, like where you're putting it. I can't speak. I'm like out of words. What I was trying to say is, um, if you want to get your sticker placement exactly right on what you're putting it on, I would use the transfer paper because it will make it easier to line things up. So, this is what our sticker looks like. I'm gonna have to zoom out to show you guys what's going on because the sticker, these stickers are big. So. Okay. And that's what the final stickers look like. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. If I was to change the um, design, I would probably make the stickers slightly smaller so I could put it on like a small surface like a water bottle. But honestly, I think this is a pretty good size. Like it's pretty like eye catching and like the colors definitely pop out. So yeah, let's get back to the desktop and we'll wrap it up. So as you can see, oop, it's kind of cut off. Let me see. I'm going to adjust this. Okay, now you can see like all of the letters. So this is what we made today. We made like a bunch of stickers in different colors. There is other ways to do this. If you don't want to load in each sheet individually, what you can actually do is um, you could theoretically, I have not tried this, but you could cut out squares of um, each color. So for example, I'd cut out squares of the rainbow and I would arrange it on the um, mat and then when you go to print the letters, 
what you can actually do is um, arrange the letters on the screen exactly how you arrange the colors on the mat so that each letter will um, just go on the mat that way. So the way that you would do that is like say, just group all of them and print them all at the same time and just arrange them on the mat so that they print in that area, if that makes sense. If that's something you guys are interested in, definitely come into the makerspace and try it out. Um, that could be like a lot quicker of a method, but I like doing it one by one so I can see like if the sizing is correct or if I need to change anything. So that's all for today. We wrapped up. I'm surprised we finished this project in one in one stream, but came up pretty good if I do say so myself. I think it looks really cool. I definitely recommend you guys try to make some stickers. Um, making text is like a very easy option if you're just looking for something to start off with. If you don't want to make your own design, you can look up SVG files or JPEGs or PNGs and upload them straight into the Cricut Design Space. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this stream and I hope you guys enjoy the new like streaming setup and what we did today. And that's all for today. Have a nice rest of your week. See you later, guys.